Okay, we'd like to welcome everyone to this press conference and to this commemoration of the second anniversary of the needless destruction of 220 homes. We're here today for two reasons, to mark the demolition of these homes and to call for a new approach to housing. This used to be a great community. It was a great place to live. There were livable homes. It was a great place to raise kids. There were lots of amenities. It was a wonderful place. But the provincial government decided to gamble with this land. They decided to sell the land and depend on developers to build social housing. This empty, desolate space behind us is proof that the provincial government's approach to housing is a failure. And it's one that should be abandoned and a new approach built. What we have behind us is an empty lot. There is no sale. There has been no final sale of this land. There are no new homes. There's no plan to even rebuild. There's just a big hole in the ground four years after they started moving people from this site and two years after they destroyed the home. You know, this would be actually be a tragedy if it were the only example of the government's failed approach to housing. But it's not. The provincial government, the federal government, and city governments are all looking at selling public land in order to build housing. And we say that is wrong. We have nearby this area RCMP lands. We have Heather Place. We have Jericho lands. And we have many other aging social housing sites that are all being considered by governments at all levels to sell the land and then build housing, depending on private developers to make that housing happen. There is a lesson here at Little Mountain for every level of government. We cannot depend on the market and private developers to build affordable homes. The key to all of it is public land. We must keep public land public. And so today we call for a new approach to housing. We must stop the government from selling public land and continuing to depend on the market for housing. Governments at all levels must invest in housing. They must invest in housing for the 99%. Developers are only interested in building housing for the 1%. We don't need more expensive high-rise condos. What we need is affordable housing and an end to homelessness. on the radio that's a tall order. I don't think so. Canada has done this before. We used to have a national housing program and now we are one of the only G8 countries in the world that does not have a national housing program. We're going to get prisons instead. We're going to get prisons instead indeed. It is entirely possible to build affordable housing with a national housing program. That program was ended in Canada in 1993, but it is possible to do it. And today we're going to hear from Libby Davies, who's tried to bring a bill and has been gaining support from all the other parties to have a national housing program as we once did. Little Mountain can also be saved. We call on the provincial government to abandon the plan to sell this land. Go back to square one. Do not sell this land. We call on every level of government to work together, use this public land, invest in a model community of affordable and sustainable homes. It can be done. So in the press kits, and we have copies of the actual breakdown of some costs that show this can be done here at Little Mountain. Citizens 
all over, during this election at the municipal level and for every level of government, provincial and national, we have to call for a national housing program like we once had. We have to think of housing as an investment of tax dollars, a good investment of tax dollars. Just as roads and schools are good investments of tax dollars, so is housing. That's where we need to go. So we say, Little Mountain should be saved, and this failure should never happen again. I'd like to now call on Don Davies, who's going to say a few words and introduce our feature speaker, Libby Davies. No relation. <laughs> thank you, Linda. Um, first of all, I want to thank Calm and all of the community uh, activists and community members who have, from the very beginning of this issue, come out and supported not only the residents of Little Mountain, but all of us, all those Canadians who want to make sure that every person in this country, every person, has access to secure, safe, and affordable housing. You know, we're here on a commemorating uh, unfortunate anniversaries. It was four years ago that the residents of Little Mountain started to be moved out of this complex. It's two years now since this complex has been raised to the ground and hundreds of people have been deprived of their homes. This complex was built in 1954. In 1954, Canadians and governments at all levels had the foresight and the resources to build 100% publicly owned housing that provided affordable housing for people. 224 units were here, uh, housing hundreds of, of uh, people, hundreds of families. We fast forward to 2011, it is inexcusable and it's unacceptable that with our greater resources today, we can't triple or quadruple the amount of units in a place like this and make it 100% public and 100% affordable. I also want to point out one other person who's here, which is the former MLA, David Chednovsky, who did great work in, around this province in bringing to our attention the problems that uh, hundreds of thousands of British Columbians and millions of Canadians are facing with regard to housing. And I love to quote his line that curing cancer is difficult. Housing Canadians is not so difficult. It is something that we can be doing, we should be doing. I hope I quoted that correctly. Um, I just want to end with a couple of statistics. Here in Vancouver Kingsway, the average single detached house cost $850,000. The average two-bedroom apartment rents for $1,250. 40% of the residents of Vancouver Kingsway live on total household income of under $40,000 a year. Now, not only are, ought we to be concerned about the shame of homelessness in a country as wealthy as Canada, but there are hundreds of thousands and millions of Canadians who are precariously housed, who are poorly housed, who are unsecurely housed. And it's those people who we have to also remember and make sure that they have access to affordable housing. So I'm here uh, to do two things. One is let you know that I introduced a motion in Parliament on May 31st, 2010 that called on the federal government to provide funds to the Little Mountain site to provide housing for seniors, for low-income people, for the disabled, also affordable market housing, with which there's many positive examples of in our world. And the other point that I'm calling for today is to reiterate Linda's call and Com's call that every square inch of this site, every inch of this public land should remain public right and on. it should be available for affordable housing. You know, the Lower Mainland is full of market housing. You know, I would say 98% of the land area of the Lower Mainland is already devoted to market housing. We have very few pieces of land that are available 
for affordable public housing. And these are owned not by the governments, they're owned by us. They're owned by the people of Canada. And we should be vigilant to protect that land and not sell off part of it to the private sector so that they can denude and divide that small amount of public land into private ownership and retain a little bit. It is an absolute disgrace that in 2011, the province is, is asking a developer simply to replace the 224 units of housing. If we built 224 units in 1954, building 224 units in 2011 represents a net loss of public housing. Yeah. If we quadrupled right. those units, yeah. we might be keeping up with just simply replacing those units on a per capita basis. So we should be calling for, for this land to remain public and let's put 800 or 1,000 units of green, environmentally sustainable, affordable housing for the people that need it in our community. Now, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce someone who has done more to further the cause of affordable public housing in this country than any politician on the federal level. And that is my colleague Libby Davies, who has introduced a landmark bill that uh, she will tell you about. And I just want to say how proud I am. Every time I go in the House of Commons, when Libby Davies speaks on this issue or any other issue, because she's actually bringing forward legislation that will help the majority of people in this country. So it gives me great pleasure, great pride, and it's an honor to introduce my colleague, Libby Davies. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much, Don. And I, I hope you've noticed that Don is uh, looking a little bit different. He's growing a mustache and a beard, and it's because it's November. So, Don, you're looking really good. Thank you. A little bit scary, but really good. <laughs> so, thank you for doing that. Um, well, first of all, uh, friends, this is a great turnout today, um, and everybody looks so great in the in the blue scarves. I know there's a lot going on in the city today, uh, so the fact that we're here uh, on this very important anniversary is, is really important. And the first thing I want to say, like Dawn, is uh, the, the core folks who have kept this fight going, this issue alive, is really quite remarkable, because it really is about just the guts. It's about just the hard work, the grinding work, to keep people together. So Ingrid and, and Linda and others who have kept this going, you guys are really amazing because you've, you've never lost faith with what you're here to do and what the purpose is. And we're here to support you in, in that struggle. Um, and I, I also want to say that I know Don is the MP in this area. Of course, I'm next door in Vancouver East and Mabel, who's the MLA. Um, this has been a very important issue in this neighborhood um, because Little Mountain was just like it was like an icon, you know, right in the center of our city. It was an icon of a, of, a, of a great development. Yeah, it was old, it was deteriorating, it needed to be upgraded and renovated, and maybe as Dawn has laid out, new plans. But it was always, Little Mountain was always a great place to go by and see and to know that it was, it was homes to people for generations, generations. And 1954, if we can go back, it was part of a great housing program that came about as all, of all the veterans coming back from the Second World War. So the, the federal government did, that's when CMHC was created. And there, were, there was a massive investment in what was called veterans housing. And we see that housing still today in Vancouver, in places like Little Mountain. Um, and mortgages were provided and, and affordable uh, public housing, as it was called then, was built. So this has been a, a great Canadian success story. You know, it's it's something that we've done well over many, many generations. So the fact that we're here today and looking at this huge piece of land, I mean it kinda it kinda hits at your heart, you know? Like this is so wrong. And and what strikes me about it on a couple of levels is first of all, just on the economics, just on the economics alone. We know that in, the, in Metro Vancouver, the single biggest issue around affordable housing is the cost of the land, right? Housing is so expensive, it's in demand, whether it's market housing or even when social housing is being built, the cost of the land is horrific. Well, what do we have here? We have land that we, we the people of BC, already own. So already there's an enormous amount of equity in this. So, 
what crazy economics is it uh, that says, well, we're going to now privatize this. We're going to turn it over to a developer who's going to build, you know, multi-million condos or whatever. And oh well, yeah, well maybe we'll throw in a few hundred, a couple of hundred social housing units if that ever happens. I mean, what a travesty just on an economic level. And I think we have to reject that and say to the provincial government, you guys have so screwed this up from an economic point of view, but from a from a human point of view, again, another tragedy that unfolded. I mean, I can't think of the stress and anxiety of what it meant for those families who had lived here for so many years. Profit housing, social housing, public housing is also about housing security for people. Well, that one was thrown out the window too. People were uprooted, thrown out, and I'm sure you're now scattered all over in very in different kinds of situations. So on that level, it's been a colossal failure as well. And then on the third level, I mean, I can think of many, but another one, here we are two years later, as Linda has said, what the hell's gone on here? Zip, nothing. So I, I think it's very important that we are here today to say that this particular site is an incredible demonstration of what's wrong with policies on housing in British Columbia and indeed federally. And so we've got to use this site and to say we do have an opportunity to change it around. We do have an opportunity to say this land shall not be sold. This land is for future generations and current generations of people who need housing. Now, I'm Don and I are totally aware that part of that uh, future or part of that plan is the federal government. And as Don has said, it's unconscionable that the federal government opted out of its provision of affordable housing in 1993. Now again, these were successful programs. I was on city council when many social housing projects, many of the very good cooperatives in our city were built. They're still there. They're still housing families in a secure, affordable, safe way. This is, this is good stuff. You know, it's good jobs when we build this housing too. And so, you know, even though the city can, can, uh, uh, can do its part, what's been lacking is the involvement of the federal government. And as Linda mentioned, the housing bill that we had um, got so close, so close to going through Parliament. We had a majority of members of Parliament who were supporting that bill, and it would have gone to the Senate had it not been for the uh, election. And so, but what I want to say to you today is the fact that we got so close means that we can't give up. It means that we, we will reintroduce the bill. We're doing that now. We'll bring the bill back. We do have to start again, but I can tell you we won't be deterred in doing that. And because we were able to make this a non-partisan, oh, I shouldn't really say that, but a, an issue that crossed party lines, a not an all-party issue, um, that, that it, that's what was happening is that even there were even conservative members who were beginning to come on board for that housing bill because they were beginning to understand that the federal government had completely dropped the ball on a federal housing program. So I want to commit to you today and pledge you today that New Democrats in Ottawa, we're going to fight tooth and nail to have that bill not only come back and be introduced and debated, but we will do everything that we can to generate the political support to see that that bill does go through again. And of course, you can do, uh, you can assist with that work. And I know there are people here from the Unitarian Church, from CALM, from other housing organizations who have been doing that. It is a way that we can make this issue very concrete and use Little Mountain as the example of what needs to be done. So I, I hope that today we are here with a sense of hope about what we can do. And, you know, it makes me think of Jack Layton. You know, Jack Layton was a great advocate for housing. He wrote two books on housing. He was the guy who got the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to put it at the top of the agenda. Um, and, and, you know, Jack was a, a tremendous advocate and understood the importance of not-for-profit housing in our country. I only wish he were here today to say, you know, to say to us, like, keep fighting, keep on. But, but in our caucus, we have that sense of solidarity. So, uh, so let's today commit ourselves to take on this issue. We're in a civic election. It's wonderful to see our civic candidates here from Pope 
We know that you guys are fighting for us so hard, Ellen on City Council and Jane on School Board and Brent who's running for Park Board and uh, 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 our Jane who's running for um, Council. Uh, we know that you guys are like tremendous advocates and we know you're doing your part. So we're here to do our part too with the community and I want to come back here. Let's hope we can come back here in a year or even less time and know that we've made a dramatic change and that we've stopped the provincial government from selling this land and saying that this land belongs to the people and it's going to be a great development in this community and in Little Mountain for a new generation of people who desperately need affordable housing. That's what we got to do, folks, and I know we're all up for it. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you, all of you, for being here today. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements before you go. Uh, it is a municipal election, and so we want to know what the what the city is doing with respect to um, housing. And uh, so Barry uh, Grove is here to talk to anybody who wants to speak about Heather Place, which is owned by Metro Vancouver and is also being sold. Uh, to build housing. So, same issue. Um, as well, we want to point out Kia. Where are you? She's got the press kits and she's got the costing items. And I just want to thank all of you. It is, it is so wonderful to see all those blue scarves and all of you who are keeping this story alive and who are making sure that this does not go down again and that it doesn't happen here at Little Mountain. So thank you all for coming today. We appreciate you. Oh, one more thing. A Dave Dewart, Streams of Justice, our uh, stalwart who built the stand for us today. Thank you, Dave. It's great.